so we have now our kit here or the pieces for our kit right so the next step once you have all the objects is to create that imm brush right now before we create the imm brush um, one of the things that is important to keep in mind, uh, I don't mind for this type of workflow, but in case you want to have uh, control of how you uh, how you applied the IMM brush later on, um, the the angle of the camera matters. So, for example, if I select this bit here, and you want it to when you when you pull it, let's say if you you have um more like a horn, really. Let me let me actually do that example because this is uh, very important. Uh, it's one of those you know easy things that seems like a very obvious thing if you know it but if you don't it could be frustrating all right so let's say that i have this um horn uh let's make a cool one um and then i just go click here on the brush palette or you can do it sorry no the the brush thumbnail i'm doing i'm gonna do it from the brush palette as well so you can have both options so from the brush palette i can go ahead and click on uh, create and then from create i can click on cre create insert mesh so when i click that i'm going to get this pop-up saying you want to append it to the current brush i don't want to affect my damn standards so i'm going to create a new one great so now i have an imm brush that's how easy it is to create an imm brush um, and i can go ahead and click and drag but this is not how i want to uh, drag um, a horn i want to do it from the base of the horn so i'm going to undo this and this is why the camera is important because it's going to do it based on the angle that you create the imm brush so if you have a bunch of horns let's say to create uh, a brush like this i'm gonna uh, you don't have to rotate it you just need to rotate the camera so um if you start rotating and hold the shift key it sort of snaps and maybe a little bit like so so that is just the you know the base um i think that's fine and then if i do the same thing i click on create insert brush i'm going to click on append so append what it does is just look at whatever you have selected as your brush so i already have this imm brush and it's appending it so i will have two um two horns but uh, when i drag them they're going to be from different um points so this is the one that if i click and drag you see now i'm doing it from from the base so that is the importance of creating an imm brush based on the camera angles or making sure that whatever you create is going to be from the right angle uh, okay so that's just a, a little branching out let's go back to what we're doing uh, so that is all to say let's yeah, let's find the front right that if for whatever reason you want to add those pieces in a specific way what you have to do is let's say go into solo mode and say i don't want to add this this way so you can from this angle rotate it say okay this is one way of doing it um maybe this one's going to be like that uh this one could be like this you know so just find the the right angle that you want to use but all of this can be changed or all of this can be um altered later it doesn't doesn't really matter okay uh, not for this i mean it does matter for a specific imm brushes but it doesn't really matter for this workflow all right so the next step once you have all this i, I know i keep saying you know, the next step but we've been in this step for a while but the next step once you have all your meshes in the right orientation and everything is unified within the two by two is to optimize them so as i said at the beginning it doesn't matter what the resolution is you can work on highly detailed meshes and everything but um, at the end of the day, we're going to optimize it so that when you create the IMM brush, you don't have lots and lots of resolution in a single brush because that's going to, as soon as you start adding pieces, it's going to create, you know, a lot of resolution and it's going to be detrimental to the process. All right. So the way that we do this is actually really simple. We're going to use the C plugin palette. Uh, this plugin comes with ZBrush. So I'm going to click on Decimation Master. And what this does, in case you're not familiar with this, is going to analyze the shape of your object and is going to simplify it. Just it's going to triangulate it. It's called decimation, uh, but it's going to try to maintain the details and the volumes with a lot less uh, polygons. So um, I'm going to show you. Yeah, I'm going to do it with all of them. So I just wanted to show you that you can do it with multiple ones or one. Uh, so I'm going to click on pre-process all. So this button right here is going to go through all of the subtools and Basically, what Zero just did or is doing is analyzing each object volume. So we're pre-processing pre -processing them all first, and then we can sort of reduce the amount. So it completed the operation in four seconds. That's it. So it hasn't changed anything. So if I go into solo mode, uh, maybe maybe on this one, 
If I go into solo mode, you see this is still the same thing, but it has already saved the, the volume of each piece into the memory of ZBrush, okay? So now I'm gonna click on decimate, decimation um, 20%, I think 20% is fine, and I'm gonna click on decimate all. So it's gonna go through all of the pieces and it's going to reduce the amount of polygons while maintaining the, the volumes. There we go. So you see, just changing that, I'm gonna go into solo and go through all of them really quickly. So it maintained the shape, but it reduced the polygon significantly. And you might think, oh, this is really low res for the type of creature I wanna make. Don't worry about it. This is not, this is not the time to worry about these things. That's why um, this is such an important part of the process. I'm spending so much time on setting things up in the right way, because uh, I know a lot of people get hung up in that idea that, oh, I don't know what to do now because I, I want to make like a high res or I don't know what to do now because I don't know if I should do the UVs or if I should do like those are things that you have to worry about later on. That's for like future you. Right now, all you want to do is create something that is impactful, that has an appeal to it. And this is this setup that we're doing is is kind of like the, the step towards that. So don't worry about the topology. Don't worry about anything other than just creating these random shapes that we're going to use right now to create chaos. And that is the important part. Um, so we're we're building we're building a whole thing just to create problems for ourselves. But then the design process is about solving those problems. I think that's one of the key aspects of this whole workshop. That um, even though what we're doing is very abstract and making these type of things very very easy, uh, ultimately when you when you are a designer. And that's, again, another thing that sets you apart from AI generated images, just to go back to that previous point. Um, when you're designing something, you're, you're trying to create a point or you're trying to communicate something. And ultimately a design or you as a designer or a concept artist, you are solving a problem. So the problem might be like, how do I represent this creature in this environment? How do I create this creature based on this brief about how it you know, behaves, blah, blah, blah. So you are, you are problem solving. That's it, right? A, a simple way to put it. So what we're creating right now, this first step of building everything is towards creating chaos. So we're going to build something that is chaotic, like it's completely abstract and seamlessly random. Um, and that's creating the problem for ourselves. It's kind of like creating the brief or creating the, the basis. And then when we get to design, when we put our designer hat on, that's, that's the idea. It's going to be like, okay, this is our problem. Now we need to think about how we can ground the design, how we can make it believable, how we can make this abstraction or the seamlessly abstract shapes uh, into something that is believable, that is appealing, that is actually has a character or a point of view, which is, again, another thing that I, I, I mean, creates amazing things, but they lack that point of view, like that, that is not infused with your... Um, with your vision of what something is or design, right? So anyway, that's another rant. <laughs> Let's go ahead and create the IMM brush. So the difference between what we're gonna do now and what we did before is that we're gonna create a multiple or multi IMM brush. So uh, you'll see uh, now that because we have a, a bunch of sub tools, if you don't have more than one or two, or I think it's three, but if you don't have more than two or three, you won't see the this um, button available. So because we have um, 20, right now, I'm going to click on create insert multi mesh. So this one is going to create a mesh or a, sorry, a brush that has multiple pieces. So if you don't see this, by the way, that is the IMM viewer um, in the default uh, UI, I think it's at the top. So you can go to preferences, uh, custom, no interface and interface IMM viewer. This one right here, uh, you can show it on and off. Hang on. Right. So you can show it on and off in case you don't see it um, or you can use is to change the placement. Uh, for me, it's just easy to work uh, in this way, but it is on the preferences. All right, cool. So now we can just go ahead and take this and start adding it, you know, any object that we want. Perfect. Now, before we move forward again, <laughs> um, another mini step within the step, we need to um, fine tune this brush so that when we are actually using it, it just speeds up the process. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna select a sphere, that's probably the easiest one. Uh, you can use anything, but I'm going to use a sphere. And uh, by the way, another thing that I should have mentioned, if for whatever reason you want to keep names in the pieces, you see that all of them, they have like EM, 3D, sphere, blah, blah, blah. Um, you need to name the subtools. So if you name the subtools and then create the multi IMM brush, then they will appear with, um, with names. Uh, but in my case, 
doesn't it doesn't really matter. I don't really have a name to give to these abstract shapes other than abstract zero one or whatever. All right, so with this one, I'm gonna click and drag, and that's pretty good. It is working the way that it is supposed to. It is adding the mesh into the mesh. It is masking everything out, so everything is good. However, if I rotate around, you see that it is being added kind of like floating in space. That is because ZBrush is using the entirety of the volume of this mesh and is um, is setting kind of like the base of that volume as the as the anchor point or like the pivot point, sorry, to um, to insert it from. So the cool thing about IMM brushes is that you can modify that pivot point for all of the meshes within the brush. So let's undo that. And you'll see I have this um, thumbnail here, which for you would be under the brush palette and under the depth. This one right here. So you can use this slider or you can just do this, literally just push this up and down. Um, so I'm going to push it down a tiny bit and then click and drag. And you'll see that now it is closer to the mesh. Let's undo that. I'm going to try to find, yeah, something like this. I want to make sure that whatever I do is rather embedded into the object that I do or that I inserted. So this is perfect. Now, this is another important concept. As I go through all of them, I'm going to go through all of the the pieces and I'm going to change the depth. So you see, if I change between objects, it just changes that depth. So as I go through this, uh, I just want to talk about why I'm trying to make it kind of like embedded into the creature or into the, into the base mesh. Now, the idea is that this process that we're using is an additive process. So an additive process just means that we're adding volume ultimately to a mesh. So everything that we add to it is going to end up making more volumes ultimately into whatever we're creating. So that means that if we have something that is not as embedded as by default these pieces are, uh, we're going to end up with something that looks very chunky and bigger and ultimately larger than what we started with. And that could be detrimental. So um, all I'm trying to do is maintain a base, a base mesh that is sort of um, within the outline of you know, the sphere, if that makes sense. Uh, I think this is going to make, a, if, it is a, if I'm confusing you, I apologize, but um, it's going to make a little bit more sense when we actually start building stuff. Um, alrighty, so um, I have all my pieces ready. I think they're working fine. So what I'm going to do is just create a quick icon for me so that I know which one it is. So I'm going to add a few pieces, um, trying to keep the, the, nice, um, the nice shapes recognizable in a way. And by the way, this is what I'm doing to create this little icon is basically what we're going to be doing with the creature. <laughs> so um, that gives you an idea. All right, I think that's enough. I'm going to clear the mask and I'm going to go to my brush palette and I'm going to click on select icon. And that's it. We now have an icon for our IMM. Again, you can, if you want to do something fancier, you can go to Photoshop, create an image. Um, and if you want to create an image, actually, you can. Um, hold the Alt key and click on select icon. If you hold the Alt key and click on select icon, it's going to open up a browser and you can select a JPEG or something uh, if you want to change the, um, that, that's it. Uh, 